Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps. We are a listener-supported radio station, where if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages, Every Little Bit Helps. We're also simulcasting live tonight on No Borders Radio in the UK at No Borders Radio. Dot co dot uk as well as on ter- ter- dot com. Thank you for allowing us this venue, Kev, Ben, and Hawk, of course. Oh, tonight, um, I, I really want to touch base with, of course, feminism. We're seeing it ramp up all over, and part of that is this local harem presentation and um, today on CNN it's being reported uh, Boko Haram village raids kill hundreds in Nigeria well, this is something that's near and dear to my heart of course so I'll just get right into it from Kano Nigeria hundreds of people were killed in raids by Boko Haram Islamic Militants in northeast Nigeria's Borneo state on the border with Cameroon with some sources putting the death toll at 400 to 500. And the book four of the church committee reports supplementary detailed staff reports on foreign and military intelligence. It states that these extremist groups, Muslim, Christian, Catholic, uh, Jew, is actually the CIA. These are CIA products. Of course, the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency, is a production company for the United States Incorporated. On Tuesday, heavily armed men dressed as soldiers in all-terrain vehicles and on motorcycles attacked neighboring Gosh, a Tagara, Agapalwa and Aganjara villages in Woza district shooting residents to death and burning homes. The attacks forced surviving villagers to flee to Cameroon and into the Mandara mountains on the border. Quote, the killings are massive. Nobody can say how many people were killed, but the figure runs into some hundreds, said Peter Bai a lawmaker in Nigeria's lower parliament representing the Gwozo region. Now again, parliament means the action of speaking, not the action of lawmaking. Parler in French means to speak. Since 1941, the United States Incorporated has had global governance through the Atlantic Charter. It was signed by President, at that time, Roosevelt and Prime Minister Winston Churchill. The area is still under the control of the insurgents and residents can't go back to bury the dead because of the danger involved, he said. On Wednesday, a military jet bombarded Boko Haram positions to dislodge the militants from the villages they have occupied, forcing them to temporarily withdraw. They don't target their own CIA agents on the ground, they target residents. They target citizens. The implication of civil war from the ground has been maintained by the CIA since before it was the CIA, when it was the CIG, which is the Central Intelligence Group. It was reformulated in 1947 with the National Security Act. Again in 1953, the United States Incorporated entered into the uh, mutual defense treaties with North Korea, the Republic of Korea. All of these civil war presentations are to maintain what is known as capacity building. You know it as the Pyongyang Project. Capacity building as a requirement for the clearing house. You know the clearinghouse as the Secretary of State. John Kerry is the one now. Hillary Clinton was the one prior.
This is all Congress. Dead bodies litter the area around the attack villages. Ground troops have yet to go to the area to push out the insurgents, he said. The attackers, who posed as soldiers, told residents they had come to protect them from Boko Haram and asked them to assemble. They singled out men and boys and opened fire on them. This is what Moses has always done. Moses and his CIA agents on the ground slaughter human beings so Moses can go up to the top of the hill and come back down and tell you it's you doing it. These judges are facilitating banking. This stems from the 1789 Judiciary Act which is a bank routing system. The global populace on this planet since Congress went bankrupt in 1933 has been picked up as prisoners of war without a government since 1933 according to the 1929 Geneva Convention. These are corporations picking you up. This is in accordance with the 1953 Mutual Defense Treaty between the United States Incorporated which has global governance since 1941 and the Republic of Korea which is the Pyongyang Project a capacity building adventure to make you produce they kill you and your family members traumatize you offer you a constitution and then tell you they'll protect you for a fee which is called a tax last summer Bo was covering this right here Bo from the Bo and Rocco show every Wednesday night right here on Revolution Radio 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Studio A years ago when they entered into the Malayan population they facilitated what is known as a war tactic called winning hearts and minds winning hearts and minds is a concept occasionally expressed in the resolution of war insurgency and other conflicts in which one side seeks to prevail not by the use of superior force but by making emotional or intellectual appeals to sway supporters of the other side the use of the term hearts and minds to reference a method of bringing a subjugated population on side was first used during the Malayan emergency by the British who employed practices to keep the Malayans trust and reduce a tendency to side with ethnic Chinese communists in this case by giving medical and food aid to the Malays and indigenous tribes a British report of the time stated quote one impressive result of this campaign has been the extent to which Malay women are now taking part and political and social affairs feminism is a political tool to bring females on side now that was a historical account of what happened in Malaysia from smh.com.au this means it's the news out of Australia November 14th 2013 asylum seeker mother kept from newborn baby in Brisbane an asylum seeker who was moved off Nauru to give birth is being locked up for 18 hours a day in a detention center in Brisbane while her week old baby remains in hospital with respiratory problems the case of Latifa, a 31 year old woman of the persecuted Rohingya people of Myanmar, has shocked churches and refugee advocates. I bet they have. And that's why she's sitting in a prison setting. 
They offered her the same help that the U.S. Incorporated and the United Nations is offering Nigeria right now while they're the ones that are on the ground killing men and boys. This is how they get at the women and children. When feminism was deployed in 1798, 1789, and upwards, males started leaving the communities. By the time feminism was fully indoctrinated into a populace was during the French Revolution, 1898, somewhere around in there. And at that point, they maintained the de Declaration of the Rights of Women and the Female Citizen. This took her rights and held the female shadow as long as she claimed those rights and bought into it and accepted all of the things that were sold to her from the tree of knowledge which allows the taking of the garden I'll continue reading she was separated from her baby on Sunday four days after a cesarean delivery and has since been allowed to visit him only between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. in Brisbane's Mater Hospital. The boy named Faris has respiratory problems and needs round-the-clock medical care. Latifa is confined to the Brisbane Immigration Transit Accommodation. Sounds pretty. It's a prison camp. 20 minutes away where her husband and two children, four and seven, are being held. Latifa's husband, Niza, is not allowed to visit the child at all. You're waiting for FEMA camps. In 1974, Dr. Henry Kissinger came in with his study ma uh, memorandum 200 to the National Security Council, which was called out by the president at that time. It was either Nixon or Ford. Uh, let me go find it here. That asked for his opinion. At that time, Henry Kissinger came back and he says, Depopulation should be the highest priority of all foreign policy. And in his study memorandum, he said, target females. Give them free education. Offer them food stamps, hearts and minds. Get them to be on point. Because he knew that she could sell out the male and the children. What happened next was absolutely horrifying. The first and second welfare theorems, which maintain corporate welfare, maintain that if you offer her various things, she'll sell the children for various things she's easily purchased. In the first and second welfare theorem, it said the goal was to get her to trade drugs in exchange for children. Today, 43 females died of prescription overdoses. That never decreases. Those numbers have been increasing throughout time since the 1970s when these policies were put into place. This is a follow through of the group of eugenics back at such as Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood. 
she didn't care about the family she didn't care about family size she was a eugenicist in the United States each and every year over one million abortions are performed since the 1980s the populace in the United States incorporated has been dwindling by three million a year human beings are not compensating for the losses due to prescription drugs hospital accidents cancer deaths and these variants as the female buys into the medical industry when the female is in dis-ease and discomfort the medical industry sells her the quote remedies through the action of medicine sin stemming from the word side meaning to kill from the national security study memorandum 200 to the secretary of defense secretary of agriculture director of central intelligence deputy secretary of state administrator agency for international development subject is the implications of worldwide population growth for US security and overseas interests the president has directed a study of the impact of world population growth on US security and overseas interests the study should look forward at least until the year 2000 and use several alternative reasonable projections of population growth in terms of these projections the study should assess the corresponding pace of development especially in poorer countries the demand for US exports especially of food and the trade problems the US may face arising from competition for resources now let me read that again the demand for US exports especially for food and the trade problems the United States incorporated may face arising from competition for resources now, the US incorporated since 1933 has been such as Google BP Microsoft corporations they are competing since the 1947 National Security Act with the human being for resources I'll continue reading and the likelihood that population growth or imbalances will produce disruptive foreign policies and international instability the study should focus on the international political and economic implication of population growth rather than its ecological sociological or other aspects the study would then offer possible courses of action for the United States incorporated in dealing with population matters abroad particularly in developing countries with special attention to these questions what if any new initiatives by the United States are needed to focus international attention on the population pro problem can technological innovations or development reduce growth or ameliorate its effects could the United States improve its assistance in the population field and if so in what form and through which agencies bilateral multilateral private the study should take into account the president's concern that population policy is a human concern and is intimately related to the dignity of the individual and the objectives of the United States Incorporated is to work closely with these others rather than seek to impose our views on them. The president has directed that the study be accomplished by the National Security Council under Secretary's Committee. 
The Chairman Under Secretary's Committee is requested to forward the study together with the Committee's Action Recommendations no later than May 29, 1974 for consideration by the President. This is signed Henry, Henry A. Kissinger, CC Chairman Joint Chiefs of Staff. That's a, quite a long read. But I urge everyone to read the Memorandum 200. And in it, you'll see how important humanity is to the United States Incorporated. Now, going back to the asylum and Latifa being interned in a prison camp. In November in the year 2013 she's on lockdown because she accepted medical and food aid from the same predator that was preying on her people just before Moses came down from that hill and said he'd protect you. Well, Bo, when he did that report, you can go find that on, of course, his channel, Bono's Entertainment. Women of Malaysia criminalized as a refugee. Winning hearts and minds, of course, you can find just by simply Googling it on Wiki. These things are not tolerable. These things are not tolerable. Absolutely not. And I, I wrote a paper years ago, and I, and I want everyone to hear. I called it feminism the creation. The feminist is not created within specialization. She is created before and is the most integral part of destruction of society. The prison starts at the point when one country is at war with another. They go in, kill all the males in front of the female kill or kidnap the children in front of the female for their country, leaving children who fight dead and those who power prisoners of war cleverly maintain refugee when the military returns to home base. She does not see the feminists who sparked the war. She does not see the country, its military, the orders to kill, the males, the children, orders to kill or be killed, nor orders to save children now orphaned. She does not see the uniforms within her relativity. Males just wiped out her family, husband, children, and knowing she is broken, perceives she has been broken by a male, not by politics. The winning country or entity now in place, the UN jumps in to save, and now as refugee, she's protected, moved to a new place where no one speaks her language and is specialized. Only to be protected by variant services, secularized by culture, language and what she just went through already vilified since the place she is stuck in was taught to dehumanize her people prior to quote the war due to her loss after once having been a wife and a mother within a community having a home things and losing it all she now builds her possessions seeks title as herself is no more Upon when she was broken, eventually seeking companionship, she may marry and procreate, will teach the males they're bad to be male, masculine, and in any way aggressive. The male will understand and help promote this theory due to the atrocity she's been through. Female children will be extra protected while she teaches them that all males are evil, aggressive, that the penis is bad. Her children will maintain titles, seeking possession, continue vilifying the male. Her male descendants, incapable of being the self, knowing now they are bad too, regardless of never seeing this firsthand. 
taught their villains and they harm women and children hammered and hammered with such awful stories of sin believing themselves and their brethren to be true to life monsters entire societies developed from one simple devious design Feminism is employed later after generation upon generation learns of that bad man vilified this prison beginning in thriving upon and ending in political design. At this point in all society, due to constant vilification of males and its hegemony kicks in to help create the societal mood and ambience, females begin taking advantage of their specialized status. Whereupon now they are the actual abusers, and while still hammering away at the fear mongering of males, their own homes become the prisons. Male children will be sorely abused, hated, stomped on, stifled, and oppressed, while female children will short circuit to the point of no return. Being raised by females that only sought title and quote mothering while hating their offspring, they begin to hate themselves. Their biology shuts down generation by generation. This monstrosity grows, and although left with breasts and vagina and ability to, to procreate, they're incapable of producing hormones needed to maintain the slightest bond with a child. Unable to nurse and lacking emotion, gravitating into full-blown psychopathy. Now within a culture that requires title to be. Specialized now, not as simply female in a broad stroke of politics, but most recently only as a mother, or tighter and tighter politics bind, promoting lack of education and left to feel inept without such title, the feminist produces well in her PC capacity, but sadly now hates children, males and other females, and within her psychopathy is capable of the most atrocious behavior. She's granted excuse in specialization to promote unfettered the destruction of man while those criminals, the actual criminals, the original perpetrators of this onslaught are in constant effort to hold safety as their bounty. Through legal maneuvers secreted by such as, quote, democracy, neither gender will see the actual puppet master taught via conditioning and human behavior modification to hate each other. They'll stay in this state until each has extrapolated all production value there is. Then specialization becomes as a rug to be pulled out from under entire societies. Financial systems fail and out of order comes chaos. Those without souls seeking title, believing themselves of elite, trampling droves, all humanity reaching for every morsel of food, consumptive behavior, anything of value, status, or prestige. The quote winners left holding hordes of shiny baubles, precious metals, jewels, and glass without another to trade with. Generations will pass whereupon feral peoples held hostage in seclusion will be, quote, found murmuring tales of old war, hell, and deceit. It's a cyclical pattern. This is how politics works. It doesn't work on, on you just believing one thing or another. It works on you believing that and turning on your brothers and sisters. That's how the game is. Most listening right now have never experienced a, a single drop of, of male perpetrated domestic violence, but oh, you've heard all about it. You've been taught not to hang around with homosexuals and lesbians and gay people, so you've never heard the stories about the females beating other females' heads in because they've been inducted in such as nunneries and Catholic youth groups. You're not aware that the, the main perpetrator of all child female sex trafficking is perpetrated by the female, according to the United Nations report of human trafficking put out in 2009. But you'll look over there at your neighbors and you'll think, man, that guy looks scary to me. Although he's never done anything, but these presentations in the media tells you he has to have. He has a penis, right? I mean, Diane Feinstein gets up there on her, her little table and stands up and beats her chest and tells you all about 
how bad penises are and how bad males are and what a threat they are to you. This cute little Moses there tells you that you are killing each other and stealing each other's wives and asses. And she's got a program for you that will protect you. If only you patronize it and pay it a tax. Barbara Boxer will further pay you guys and tell you how much you're supposed to hate each other. Show you all these presentations. And you never look to see where these people sit. Babs there and Diane sits along with Johnny Cornyn on the Senate Judiciary Committee. You know, all that separation of power, Senate, Judiciary. Diane Feinstein also sits on the Senate Intelligence Committee. She is the CIA. As she comes out with production after production and said, Oh, the NSA is spying on Congress. No, it's not. She's the director. CIA is Congress's child. You can read about that in the 1947 National Security Act. There is no other director of the CIA other than Dianne Feinstein and her cronies. The National Security Agency is under the CIA. These are all presentations. And the CIA just killed upwards of 500 men and boys in Nigeria because you allowed it through patriotism. You've been calling Moses your father. Moses was a judge. Matthew 23, Jesus said, Don't you dare! What are you doing sitting at the right hand of Moses? They put on really good shows. The outside of their cup is really shiny. But man, the inside is full of filth and inequity. 1 Corinthians 6. He says, for shame, what are you doing? I'm so ashamed of you for patronizing these judges. Don't you know you are the judge? Then he went on to explain, you can only fornicate by giving your body over to that Lord God. And then he explained what the Lord God was. He said, you, God, have raised up the Lord God, so shall you raise us up by your own power. What does it say in the first article of the Constitution? It says you've been calling Congress the Lord God now for however long. You vested power in Congress. If you look at the etymology on that one, it says that means with transgression. Why are you calling your transgressor your father? Taking up all of these cons concepts sold to you by that Lord God and its tree of knowledge. You were told that thing kills you and over and over and over and over and over again it does right in front of your faces. You're still patronizing it. You're still asking it to give you rights and benefits. That's what a child does to its father. It says, can I have some allowance, Dad? I want to go out this weekend. Can I have some allowance, Dad? Aw, oh, come on. Why can't I say that? That father's been selling you rights to speak. Rights to vote. And you were told never to call that thing your father. Never ever. Don't call it anything your father. Not even Christ. He said, don't call me your father either. You're God. It says that right in Revelation. It says, as soon as you go through all this crap and you realize who you are, all things are revealed. And once you know what's written in their book, codex means book, it says you get really pissed. You, God, the listener, 
I don't worship another God. I've been praying to you forever. I am not to be worshipped. I'm not some, some kind of martyr. I, I've been praying to God. This is how it works. I say, okay, look, they're killing your kids. And if God hears me, he or she stands up and says, holy Christ, let's get a move on. It, God doesn't say, we need to go hide beneath the rocks. The Lord God says that. And we've been watching that over and over since they were found guilty of genocide and human trafficking last year. And what do you think your army is? It sure as heck ain't Santa Claus and a bunch of reindeer. Some other commercial product sold to you by the same law merchant that tells you you are killing each other and stealing each other's wives and asses while the CIA is on the ground killing over 500 men and boys. So they could get at the women and children. In 1975, after Henry Kissinger's Memorandum 200 to the National Security Council, he established his depopulation program. It was called the Office of Population Affairs. If you're online right now, which so many of you are, please go to the Office of Population Affairs because it's also known as the Department of Health and Human Services. Welfare. That is the war tactic of winning hearts and minds. Now the female is susceptible because she is the one that's being abused. She is the one that's seeing these things presented to her. She is the one on the ground watching her husband and her children get slaughtered in Nigeria by the CIA. And she's the same one when the UN gets there after perpetrating these things upon her family and community that runs right into the arms of the predator. Because you're not there to stop it. You're not standing up. You're looking at your brothers and sisters as if they're different colors and cultures and languages. Those are constructs. That is not relativity or any type of reality. Those are psychological constructs within psychological warfare to pit you against each other. It's the oldest trick in the book is to divide and conquer. And you're playing right into it. You're playing right into it. You're buying right into it. And in this, you're not protecting each other. The children rely on you. Where are you when the predator is out hunting? Where are you when this thing is infiltrating your communities and you're patronizing it and abjuring the realm? This is your kingdom. How did they shut up the kingdom? They get you to call it father. If you're not the father, then you have another king over you. You're worshipping somebody else. You're calling something else your father. And today, you know, I'm not going to continue ranting. Today on Facebook, I got a news feed that really irritated me. Um, Alan Grace and this congressman. He has a site called Congressman with Guts. It's ridiculous. So he's got a 
picture out today. It says, quote, on Friday morning at 12.40 a.m., the U.S. House of Representatives did something that has eluded it for 42 years. It passed a law to prevent journalists from being imprisoned for protecting their sources. He says, I took this concept, known as the, quote, shield law, boiled it down to 52 words, and put it up for a surprise vote, and, quote, and won. What the hell did you win? The lawmakers who made it legal to arrest journalists was the same damn lawmaker. So, of course, I went over to his wall. And I wrote, Mr. Congressman, one, who made it legal to arrest him in the first place? And, and just for, you know, shits and giggles, I said, hint, it was not a citizen without the power vested in them to make such laws to sell them back the same thing as a right or benefit later. And number two, I said, would this be considered insider trading? Propaganda or both? Of course, I didn't get a response. And my quest for always for knowledge because he happened upon my Facebook news feed, and everybody knows how much I love Congress members. I googled him and found out that he's on the Israel Allies Foundation. He happens to be one of the lawmakers pushing his way into Pal the Palestinian co uh, communities. Sitting on these boards, representing corporations in a perpetual raising of humanity. So his bio page says, Alan Grayson is a U.S. representative for Florida's 9th District. He's for sworn in on January 3rd, 2013. Congressman Grayson serves on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Now, you go back to the Memorandum 200. And you read about Dr. Henry Kissinger there. In his depopulation program should be the highest priority of all U.S. foreign policy. Now everybody's looking for these false Jews. They're sitting in Congress and they're black and they're white and they're red and they're yellow. They're every color under the sun. The false Jew is Congress, your transgressor, claiming to be, quote, Israel, or Palestine, or Iraq, or Afghanistan, or Iran, or Greece, or Australia, or Germany, Austria, Cambodia, Cuba, Mexico, U.S. Incorporated Canada. They're all the same confederacy in action. Now, all of you that live in fear, what if I stand up? What will happen to me? Hello? Do you hear my voice? I'm not dead yet. We sued them and won. There's no excuse for you sitting down. There's absolutely no excuse for your inactivity, your apathy, indifference towards your fellow human being. Unless you're Judas. And that welfare check or social security check or veterans check or retirement 
maintains you as a nice soft bellied little fuzzy warm rabbit in the matrix the artificial womb but wait nineteen seventy five after Kissinger did his memorandum two hundred to the National Security Council and said depopulation should be the highest priority of US foreign policy he came up with a new d d d program here the targeting agency for the operation is the National Security Council's ad hoc group on population policy it's probably yeah excuse me its policy planning group is in the US State Department's Office of Population Affairs established in 1975 by Henry Kissinger that is the Department of Social and Health Services that is welfare that is under the Social Security Act Title IV. That is under the same flag that you're saluting and patronizing, pledging allegiance to. That's the depopulation program. You're getting your belly rubbed by the thing that's killing you. I don't know what's going to move you and what what should have moved you is when you found out that your brothers and sisters are being killed to keep you on welfare that your brothers and sisters it takes two to facilitate this SUK trust not one it's not something tangible it's an action it's in being the Sessor K Trust consists of the use and the vi. The vi is the life that measures. So if you're the use and you're on welfare, Social Security, Veterans Pay, or Retirement, there's a millstone around the vi's neck or vice versa if you're the vi you're the one that's working your butt off you're the one that's being criminalized and finding yourself run through the medical or psychological industry let that one sink in because if you don't stand up for your fellow human it's over you're done you want your share Jesus said pick up your cross and follow me he didn't say toss your cross over there so some other dude can pick it up he didn't say bury your cross and go back for it later It's such a short walk if you just pick up your cross and follow me. And of course, me is always the Vi. It's the one in front of you. You've been taught to see inward, but you only see outside of your eyes. Your eyes cannot see the ego, the super ego, or id. Those are social and psychological constructs your eyes see the human being in front of you that's the actual me that you're supposed to be following that's the me you're here to protect 
that me is called Jesus. G-E, meaning earth in Greek, space S-U-I-S, meaning your in Latin. Because it is known that God protects his child, Jesus. The person in front of you. Interesting news on New York CBS Local com. 89-year-old tennis pro looks back on career and his undercover work with the CIA. Fred Kovaleski is a tennis pro who spent a decade using the sport as a decoy for the CIA and now is one of the world's oldest tennis players. He has begun talking about his past. On CBS 2's Emily Smith reported, Kovaleski, 89, remains a master of the tennis court and he tells it how it is. Quote, I'm probably the best 85 and older in the world, and I'm going over to Europe in, two, in another two days to play in the World Championships, end quote. Kovaleski is a tennis champion whose lifelong love for the sport afforded him a college scholarship and ultimately a job with the CIA. He said tennis was absolutely his cover. Kovaleski got the gig without even really wanting or trying for it. He traveled to Europe for a tennis match representing the United States during an obligatory meeting with the U.S. Council of Embassy in Egypt. He received an offer to work undercover. Quote, I spoke Polish and Russian. Still do, he said. And Russian at that time was a serious enemy of ours. Yeah. It was a CIA production called the Cold War. The Cold War is a title, it's intellectual property. Kowalski spent time in Egypt playing pro tennis, but as a new CIA agent, he also aimed to recruit agents. Quote, we were really looking for information on how they operated, he said. After 10 years, in 1961, Kowalski decided to leave the life of a secret agent behind taking a full-time job with Pepsi Cola and focusing on his wife Monia and their son. That's not a very large jump, is it? Pepsi Co is, of course, part of the U.S. Incorporated. While a lot has changed at 89 years old, he's still playing tennis and is currently one of the premier senior tennis players in the world. Kowalski said his life has been a series of lucky breaks and now he cannot wait to see what the next decade brings. He turns 90 in October. Kowaleski played Wimbledon in 1950. He is considered the 13th best player in the world. He said had there been more money in tennis back then, he would have made that his one and only career. Interesting. Very interesting. Hidden agents all over the place. Sick. Scary, sick, disgusting. You know, the, the, the things that they've done, the, the, the things, the horrifying things that they've done under the guise of foreign policy and free trade agreements and treaty ability and all of these Confederate actions. It's just absolutely sick. It's foul, sick. You guys are traitors to your own race. Human. Sick. To be bought off is just sick. I urge everybody to listen to The Ultimate Revolution by Aldous Huxley. And you can find that at www.archive.org uh, forward slash details forward slash Aldous Huxley dash The Ultimate Revolution. Today, uh, Wanda commented on my post after I posted it on my wall. She said, they know us better than we know ourselves. So I simply posted a quote from Jesus. Know thyself. Somebody predicts you, don't let them. We'll be right back, folks. Stick around.
Hi, and welcome back to the second hour of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps. We are a listener-supported radio station. What if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. Um, hmm. I just lost my train of thought. We're also simulcasting tonight on No Borders Radio in the UK at nobordersradio.co.uk as well as Tiernasor at tiernasor.com. Uh, feminism. I mean, I, I started out at the top of the last show and I ended up on a rant because it just, it's so irritating. This game perpetually played against humanity using the female. Using the female. Specializing that female. She could do no wrong. Well, when we held Congress accountable, we held its child accountable as well. Okay? Under, <coughs> excuse me, since the coronation charter, the king has held the female's estate in shadow. You've been property of the state. You've enjoyed it because you've been calling it dad. And uh, that's all That's all coming to an end. And this week, you know, I had very, very interesting conversations uh, with feminists and psychopaths and myriad of others that, you know, never going to get it because they cannot conceive of human thought. They have no human emotion, no human compassion, absolutely no empathy whatsoever. They've been specialized, they believe they're immortal, so be it. Um, you know, and so many horrifying things have been you know, happening to that female, particularly because of her mindset. She has been taught that she is absolutely immune from prosecution. She has been taught that she's untouchable, unstoppable, so specialized, she's a queen, nobody's ever going to touch her. Well, that's all coming to a halt, folks. That's all coming to a halt. And it ends, and it's been ending for since last year when her father was held accountable for human trafficking and genocide using her as an agent to facilitate the trade of children while she, Judas, has been living high on the hog and accepting benefits in exchange for the selling of children From WFTV.com, children found living in feces, bug-filled home in Kissimmee, Florida. Authorities are investigating after six children were found living in deplorable conditions as, at a home in Kissimmee. Investigators said the smell inside the Holly Hot Court home was horrid and that trash, feces, and infestation of bugs filled the home. The parents, Kaisa and Randy Donawa, were arrested Friday after drug agents raided their residence. Aside from the deplorable conditions, authorities also found 26 marijuana plants and a gun. In an odd twist, Kaisa Donawa, 41, worked for the Department of Children and Families, but was fired after her arrest. This is what happens when you become overhead. After you take that bag of silver, they take it right back. Now, all of you feminists are screaming now, and you're in an uproar, all you psychopaths just hate the crap out of me. Jesus, however, said, quote, you are known for your works in action. I had hours and hours and hours of argument this week regarding abortion and accountability for years for years the medical industry has known that there is a much 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 almost 46 percent higher incident rate of breast cancer for females that garner abortions but it wasn't until recently that they facilitated the quote research came up with those numbers 
And of course, I was arguing with somebody who didn't have the same mindset as myself. And so in this argument, she was justifying, oh, no, you're not going to charge everybody that, that's had an abortion, right? I said, heck, no, they've already killed themselves. I don't need to charge them for murder. They chose to have abortion, and whatever happens, happens. She just couldn't believe that little babies are not little objects. They're not things that can be disposed of, and the human mind does not even consider child murder. The psychopath does. The psychopath can contemplate and execute child murder. And it can be justified by the attorney giving it an excuse. A human being does not, does not seek out or act to kill other human beings. unless in the most horrifying self-defense situations. And of course, they would be otherwise defending their family and community. But a human being will not defend things. You will not see a human being shooting somebody who's stealing a TV. You won't see a human being firing on somebody stealing a car can't process that kind of thing there's nothing nothing more important than a human being now as always Jesus said you are known for your works and actions Interesting stories coming out this week in the mail, the Daily Mail.co.uk. New breed of piranha women who are preying on rich men to get them pregnant ones. Lawyer, oh, your handlers turned on you. Sorry, ladies. Wealthy men are being tricked into bed by single women who deliberately get pregnant because they view a baby as a career option. Top lawyer warned yesterday. Well, wait a second. That's the thing that was specializing them. That attorney's been saying it's okay for them to do that. <laughs> Accountability. Accountability. In, in, in all known histories, I've never, ever seen her forsaken. That psychopath took down Rome. The lawless female was the fall of Rome. Sadly, it looks like her attorneys turned on her. I'll continue reading. Soaring numbers of men are being forced to part with their money once they have been ensnared in this way by pretty young females. I like this one. They are seen as easy prey by devious women who have no desire to work and equate a baby to a trophy and a meal ticket to gourmet life for the next 18 to 21 years. Sound familiar, girls? I warned you. And I've been doing this for 15 years. Almost 15 years. And I tried and I tried and I tried to get you to stop what you were doing. Running the mail through family court process and running off with other men and agents screwing him over, falsely accusing him of everything under the sun so you can get that meal ticket. 
You were told to stop. You should have never been ha- I, I should have never had to tell you to stop. Human beings don't even contemplate those things. The next sentence, and this is on the dailymail.co.uk for all of those that want to go see it for themselves, because it is like uh, mind-boggling to see this in a in a world of feminism and predation of males and children. <clears throat> And females. The psychopathic female is, is the, the main perpetrator of the child sex trafficking industry, the female sex trafficking industry, and the male slave labor market, according to the 2009 report on human trafficking brought out by the United Nations. I'll continue reading. These predators, namely man-eating women intent on securing a cushy lifestyle, have been dubbed piranhas. It is a term that has been borrowed by lawyer Diane Benussi to describe women who flaunt themselves in the hope of snapping up a high-flying gentleman whether he is married or not. Now, we've been saying that for years. The histrionic female, histrionic psychopathic female, that's what she does. She shakes her little tail, get attention. That's the, her function, the PC product. She's not human. She's a different model. She's a PC model. Then they will lure the unassuming man into having unprotected sex under the pretense they cannot become pregnant or are on the pill. I started out in father's rights and 80% of, of our victim males would come to us and tell us the same story. She said she couldn't get pregnant. I've been paying child support for 13 years. And she got pissed off at me one day and said I'm not the father. Now I can't get out of it because of presumptive parenting laws. And punitive father registries. Punitive father registries. These courts so far, up until now, have been playing right into it because it's good for business. She's been selling the children down river. This is human trafficking. Last night, Mrs. Brunetti said increasing numbers of women were shying away from work and marriage and looking instead for easy financial sources. Well, yeah, no-fault divorce brought that game into play. That was back in the 80s. And you can actually read this research in the Uniform Marriage and Divorce Act, UMDA. It was written by feminists out of uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, the model ground for feminism in the United States Incorporated. Model before that was Bolshevik Russia. Oh, but we don't want to talk about her end. We don't want to talk about the end of the psychopath. We don't want to warn her that she was the one in front of firing squads and in the gas chambers. This once overhead is overhead, it's overhead. Children age out, her looks fade. She becomes that cat lady that the local judge Swords out a warrant for, for hoarding, or whatever. So many men have been brought to their knees by you psychopaths. Children sold into the most horrid conditions. They're absolutely horrifying. You're, you're a disgrace. To the human race. Between you and the effeminate male, I don't know who's worse. Biden's one of them. Obama came up there as a feminist on his platform, didn't he? Promised you lots of little benefits, your bag of silver. Where did he go? 
Come on, girls. He came in with the Ledbetter Fair Pack and said, Oh, females are being paid less than males. Come on over here to this side, honey. I was back in 2009. Just recently in the State of the Union address, he said the same thing. He said federal employed females are paid less than males. Congress is still not paying you as much as they pay males. It's never been the male against you. It's always been the same father forsaking you and allowing you the choice to turn on your own husbands and children, on your own families, allowing you free will to burn all your bridges until you come to this point in time which is known as accountability. Your daddy's been found guilty of human trafficking, genocide. And it's responsible for its agents. How do you think that's going to work out for you? I went my whole life being so ashamed to be even assimilated, affiliated as a female. Until I learned about you about what you are, about what you're missing, that frontal lobe, you, you, you don't have the same composition as I do, but yet you'll speak on my behalf in the form of Diane Feinstein and Barbara Boxer. And you'll stand up there and pretend to be me as this huge, huge display and false flag. Until now, when you're being called out for what you are, absolutely nothing. And it's written what you get. Render under Caesar what is Caesar's and what is God, what is God's. And here we go. From WHIO.com, woman charged for carjacking story. Dayton, Ohio, a woman who allegedly claimed her SUV was stolen at gunpoint yesterday was charged with making up the story. Police were called to the Miami Valley Hospital emergency room around 6 a.m. to speak with 59-year-old Brenda Evans. Evans allegedly told them she was on her way to the hospital and was sitting at a stoplight when a man walked up, pointed a gun through her open window, and told her to get out of the vehicle, according to the police report. Officers became suspicious when the woman said it took her 12 hours to drive from Richmond, Indiana, to Dayton, which is about an hour's trip, according to the report. Officers did a search on the vehicle registration and found it had been involved in a hit-skip crash earlier in the night and has been towed. They said Evans then changed her story and told them that she went to purchase crack when some men said they needed to borrow her SUV for 30 minutes. She told the officers they then called her and told her to tell police she had been carjacked, according to the report. She was issued a summons for making false reports, obstructing official business, and prohibited substance solicitation. So she was out just gallivanting around and involved in a hit and run and thought she'd get away with it. I wish they would have let her file those insurance claims so she could, could have gotten it for insurance fraud too. Maybe a couple other felonies for her behavior, assuming she didn't have any responsibility. <clears throat> and I'll be damned, Judas gets it. From wavy.com, woman charged with teens abduction. Now, this one has been a thorn in my side for forever. Newport News, Virginia. 
A Newport woman is facing abduction charges for taking a teenager from her home Sunday with the girl's consent. Just before 3 p.m., a 64-year-old man called 911 and reported three people invaded his home and took his 16-year-old stepdaughter, according to Holly McPherson with the NNPD. The man told police that two men and a woman, who he recognized as his stepdaughter's friends, kicked in his front door. He opened the door and told them to leave, but the men pushed their way inside, forced him to the floor, and the woman led his stepdaughter out of the home. As an, an investigation revealed, the 16-year-old stepdaughter had arrived home after her curfew, prompting an argument with her parents. So police say she called 34-year-old Melissa Latta Allen, told her she was being abused by her parents, and asked Latta Allen to come get her. Latta Allen, a 17-year-old boy and another male who had not been identified, showed up at the house and took the girl. Latta Allen was taken into custody at the scene after returning to the home with the 16-year-old, she was charged with abduction and burglary. 17-year-old was found at his home in Newport News. Second male has not been identified, but the investigation into the incident is ongoing. Anyone with information that can help detectives is asked to call the crime line at 1-888-LOCK-YOU-UP. How many times has Judas done that? and then facilitated a CPS case against the parents after a teenage female is upset over being punished or grounded or whatever else. I've never seen anybody held accountable until now for this type of crap. Absolutely abduction. They're attorneys. They turn children away from their parents and teach them that there is no authority other than them. This is their function. Sick. This is common practice up until now. And there is no more. Absolutely no more. Absolutely no more. These things are absolutely deplorable. They will not be tolerated any longer. These are our children. So you leave them in their homes. If they're grounded, they're grounded. If they have rules, you leave them there. You don't come in and pervert their, their relationship and divide their families. You're sick. Get away from our children. Sick. Absolutely deplorable. Shameful. You have no business being around other people's children. Absolutely none. You predators, get away from us. Get away from my children. Stay away from my children. Sick. Sorry about that, folks, the clicking sound. From Fox4KC.com, Warrensburg woman charged with threatening to kill people at an elementary school. Warrensburg, M Missouri, prosecutors charged a 30-year-old woman Tuesday morning with threatening to kill people at an elementary school in Warrensburg, Missouri. According to court doc documents filed in Johnson County, Missouri, Jenny Lynn Waldrop, 30, is accused of threatening to use a gun to kill everyone at Ridgeview Elementary School. Waldrop was arrested Monday after allegedly calling a secretary at the school and telling the secretary that she was going to go back to the school with a gun and effing kill everyone. According to the probable cause, Waldrop was upset because she had to pick up her son from school. Waldrop was upset because she had to pick up her son from school. Humanity doesn't find it a burden at all to have children. They haven't lost anything or haven't been displaced or irritated 
by the action of parenting. Psychopaths find it uncomfortable to parent. Psychopaths find it a burden and an irritation to have to go pick up their children. Maybe parent have to do things. It's absolutely disgusting. You're just disgusting. You, you, you just make me so ashamed. From the SouthBendTribune.com, adopted parents file class action suit against Indiana DCS. Now listen very carefully, Judas. This is something that I've been waiting for all of my life. All of my being has been wrapped up in this one. And again, going back to the first hour, Memorandum 200 to the National Security Council by Henry Kissinger. He mentions in there a very interesting form of a retirement plan. Whereas people age, especially females, they require the use of family members to maintain their retirement for them. Another action of the psychopath. Laporte, Indiana. The Indianapolis attorneys who won a class action lawsuit against Indiana's Bureau of Motor Vehicles last year have turned their attention to the 1,400 families on a, quote, waiting list for money meant to help raise children adopted from the state's foster care system. Class action lawsuit was filed Monday in LaPorte County against the Department of Child Services and its director, Mary Beth Bonaventura, and on behalf of Debbie Moss, a LaPorte grandmother, profiled in a February column in the Tribune. She's struggling to care for her three grandchildren without the adoption subsidies she was promised. Judas didn't even get his bag of silver that time. This whole credit system has everybody thrown off, doesn't it? In a press conference Monday afternoon in Indianapolis, Attorney Richard Chevitz described a state policy enacted by former DCS Director James Payne in 20, 2009 in which DCS negotiated ad adoption rates with many families who qualified for them, signed contracts, but then told them they would be placed on a waiting list until the money was available at the same time returning millions of dollars back to state coffers. And we'll get into that in a minute. That's through the CAPTA program. That was Walter Mondale's baby. Quote, this is obviously something that has real consequences for real people, Shevitz said. Court documents list nearly $240 million returned to the state over five years in fiscal years 2009 through 2013, Beneventura took over as DCF chief in March of 2013. This, uh, attorneys allege, was a breach of the contracts DCS signed with the adopted parents. They were promised money in exchange for children. This is human trafficking. I won't read the whole thing. I'll just scroll down. This one is sick. Moss easily recites the unexpected conversation with a judge that led to her adopting her three grandsons from Mishawaka, Indiana. One of the Laporte's woman's daughters, the mother of the boys, had lost parental rights because of abuse she had not deflected from them. She never abused the children. It sounds like she was in an abusive relationship. Moss had acted as a foster parent to the boys, but on this day, another of Moss's daughters was prepared to officially adopt them. But in his courtroom in South Bend, former Judge Peter Namath scuttled caseworkers' arrangements after learning the would-be adopted mother would be placing the children in care during the day. Was there any other relative in court who could take them in steady ass? He zeroed in on Moss, she recalled for a Tribune writer earlier this year in his famously direct manner. 
Who was she, and since she had been fostering them, could she raise them? Moss told the judge about her ongoing health issues and that she subsists on disability payments because of her cancer in remission. Namus said, she pointed out, that the state would help her support the children as former wards of the state. Quote, get me a letter from your oncologist that your cancer is in remission and the children are going home with you. End quote. So she took the bag of silver. It says, so Moss left the juvenile justice center and showed up at her oncologist's office across town after telling the staff while she was there. The doctor came over and asked her, quote, what are you doing? It'll be too much stress on you. Quote, I said, it'll be too much stress on me if I don't take them. I won't get paid. I won't get anything if I don't get them. Moss recalled telling her daughter, who wrote a letter for the judge saying he was going to be doing so under protest. Yeah. Don't call him a ringer or anything. Moss officially adopted her grandchildren, now four, five, and seven, on July 13, 2012. So the bottom line is, Judas didn't hand back that bag of silver this time. He sued the chief priests and elders because he never received what he was promised in exchange for, you know, taking children off of their parents. Who do you think testified against that mother? Who do you think testifies against you? Who do you think hotlines on you? CPS just doesn't walk around your neighborhood looking for somebody to pick up. Jesus is always crucified by envy. Always. You get a disabled psychopathic female that's aged out of the system. She can no longer shake her tail. Her looks fade. What does she have to do now? First thing she's got to do is hotline CPS and tell them somebody's abusing kids or neglecting them. Second thing is she's got to get with the domestic violence shelter or some other attorney to coach her. Third thing is you get those ringers in there, those extra witnesses, the psychiatrists who love preying on those children, you know, because of those latchkey programs, after school programs, Catholic diocese programs. They all get to prey on those babies because she really doesn't want them. She's suing the state because it didn't pay her the silver. She really didn't want her grandchildren. They're not children to her. They're little cash cows. This is how politics and family court works. This is how attorneys make their money. This is how grandma gets a free ride. Sister, auntie. Whoever sees the most benefit in, in crucifying Jesus, they don't care about the children. They want those dollars. They want that free ride forever. Those adoption subsidies only run out when the children age out. Shit. If you have like five or six kids of your own, you can keep taking them off of them. I mean, that, that lasts forever. Then your grandchildren, you can just work on your grandchildren after that. Great-grandchildren, as long as it takes. Psychopaths aren't aren't discretionary. Whatever it takes. Apparently the funding's run out. Now these judges let's get into these little bankers here because the interesting part was the two hundred and forty million dollars that disappeared back into quote state coffers. These local communities, through the judge, that banking system, excuse me, just one moment. Sorry about that, folks. So these bankers, these judges, these lord gods, 
They're getting federal monies out of the federal coffers for taking care of children that they're not taking care of. They're just trafficking them. As exemplified in this story and many, 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 many others. And instead of apparently, evidently, giving those monies out to those they promised to, they kept both, the federal dollars and the matching funds. So these bankers are cashing in every way, including the ability to prey on the babies. Because the people purchasing them and the people accepting money to take care of their own family members, they don't want the kids. They put them right in every program imaginable. After school, latchkey programs, psychiatric care, whatever gets them the most money. And in this, this is how the children are trafficked. They're raped and molested and abused by psychiatrists, doctors, teachers, judges, attorneys, juvenile justice centers, and everybody saw this in the Cash for Kids scandal. Oh no, you guys didn't watch carefully enough. The judges that were nailed in that case, which were never really nailed, we'll talk more about that some other time, were nailed for selling kids to juvenile justice, to psychiatrists, to doctors, to nurses, to attorneys, to legislators. And nobody else ever got charged. Just those judges. Just the pimps. Not the other end of that. The psychopaths that were purchasing those children to do everything under the sun to those children. But you were glad that, quote, somebody got nailed. But that was only the bank. What about the predators that were raping the children? Molesting and abusing and killing. One of those children committed suicide. At least one. And there's been so many, so many sad, disheartening, absolutely disheartening accounts of so many other children preyed on unnecessarily under your watchful gaze because you're still patronizing that thing that's preying on the children. You have to stop doing this. This is absolutely deplorable, and I, I the blame rests with you for patronizing it. First Corinthians 6, Jesus said, I'm ashamed. For shame! How dare you do these things? I mean, you, you have a brain, you're, you're running after money. You're, you're going after money and things and baubles and trinkets. You're not contemplating human uh, humanity. These are the babies that are being slaughtered and traded through the court trafficking system. Bought and sold by the law merchant. Absolutely horrifying. There's, there's, there's not a word to describe these things. You've allowed all of these things to occur and, and been complicit through your inaction. Waiting on what kind of savior? What are you waiting for? Congress to one day wake up as Charles Manson and say, Oh, yeah, I killed that girl and the baby. You know, darn the luck. I'll slap myself on the hand for that one. I'll slap it really hard if you don't believe me the first time. 
one of your representatives, Farnham from Illinois, just said that he doesn't like children to pray on children over than 12. 12 is his limit. He likes children that are between 6 and 9. One of your Congress members that you're patronizing and calling father said that he really likes your kitties. And, and you're not screaming. He, he's out. He's walking around with his uh, oxygen tank on and making you feel sorry. For, oh, he's so sad. He's got oxygen on him. Counselors after counselor after counselor being charged with child molestation. And you're still sending your kids to camp this summer. Because, you know, there's other things you got to do besides parent. You're responsible for the abuse of these children. They're, they're, they're your obligation to protect. It's not somebody else's obligation to protect the, the children that you bore. How dare you have children for benefit of having children without adhering to the responsibility and letting loose your grasp of the babies putting them in these Hitler youth camps and these daycare centers and all of these things of sickening, disgusting, absolutely foul. There's not a word. Things. From blacklistednews.com, California cop fatally shoots 18-year-old special needs girl after family calls for medical help. California family says that a call to 911 to get medical assistance for an 18-year-old family member with special needs ended in tragedy when police showed up and instead killed her. Deputy Rebecca Rosenblatt told KT KNTV that San Mateo County Sheriff's deputies responded to reports that a violent female suspect was thought to be armed in Half Moon Bay. Deputies arrived on scene, Rosenblatt explained to KRON. Shortly thereafter, there was a confrontation where the deputy was in fear for his life and as a result, he fired his weapon. Tiny Serrano, who said that the girl was his sister, identified her as 18-year-old Yanira Serrano. The brother, however, told a different story about events that led up to Yanira Serrano's death. Tiny Serrano said that his family called 911 hoping that paramedics would come to provide medical assistance because his sister had special needs and she had not been taking her medication. He admitted that she may have had a knife. The family had called paramedics for assistance before, so they were shocked when deputies showed up and fatally shot Yanira, Yanira Serrano. Quote, she has special needs and we just want answers, the brother remarked. Who are we supposed to call now when we need help when who is supposed to help us is killing our kids? Why didn't they use a taser? We just want to know what really happened. San Mateo County Sheriff's Office placed the deputy on administrative leave while detectives and other San Mateo County District Attorney's Office completed an investigation. I'm tired of these prescription medications. Okay. We've been watching as a lot of children are acting out recently. Up and down my Facebook wall. It's summertime. And I always know it's summertime because children are out of school. I know that they're out of school because their mothers are along my news feed. Saying how bad it is to be parenting and how their children are acting out and hitting and biting and kicking and punching. So they run off to the psychiatric industry and medicate the kids. And they never, ever, 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 ever ask why the children is acting out. Why is that child acting out? For every action there's an equal and opposite reaction 
if your children are hitting and biting you, there's something wrong. You've done something, or they perceive that you've done something or harmed them in some way, or they feel incapable of protecting themselves. Stop harming them. Who's abusing these babies? And why is it that the moment they're out of school for the summer, you're on them like white on rice? You can always tell by these posts who hates children and who doesn't. Summertime for a human being is a blessed event. Normally, if they have their children in school, it's fun, and they can't wait to spend time with the children. Most are from divorced families, of course, and all of these things, and it's just blessed to have their children with them. But again, Jesus said, known by your works and actions, you'll be held accountable. From abcnews.go.com, a surge of children crossing border alone, filling Lackland Air Force Base. One boy in particular is among the 1,200 children being housed at an emergency shelter set up at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio. He drew a touching picture with crayons hanging on the wall in his dark room with the caption, Echo de menos a mi familia. Which means I miss my family. Children like this boy who is from Mexico are surging into the United States from Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. And earlier this week, President Barack Obama declared a, quote, urgent humanitarian situation. And to all of those that are screaming over chemtrails, it's cloud, cloud seeding. It's silver iodide. And its effects are to control where water falls and where it doesn't. Core drilling is a particularly interesting thing as is the diesel coil that through the use of frequency when placed into large areas of rock underground creates earthquakes and volcanic activity. Hot spots. Geoengineering is a part and parcel of quote development and quote national security. So if the Lord God presents to you natural disasters and kills off your elders by sickness and medical propaganda, earthquake activity, tsunamis, hurricanes, tornadoes, through magnetic interference. Children are made orphan. Refugees, like the lady I spoke of earlier in the show, these are all capacity building ventures known as Korea, the Pyongyang Project, according to the 1953. Mutual Defense Treaty with the United States and the Republic of Korea.
I think in this show we covered all facets now of how they get at the babies. They falsely accuse their fathers, restrained fathers, allowing psychopathic females to sell children into the system for a buck or prescription medication. CPS workers ripping children off of otherwise healthy, intact families by division. I think I forgot to talk about principal agents that are in every school, public school system, called a principal, maintaining false allegations. And of course, as expert witnesses, when it comes your turn to be in the bank, being tricked out by that banker judge in the black robe there, the attorney in the black robe, and corporate counsel offsetting congressional bankruptcy since 1933. And of course, I'll keep doing this until you all stand up for the children or you, you get run down when you get in our way because we're protecting children. So either way, the children are going to be safe. I don't know about all of you, of course. You're either with us or you're against us. The United States court is fully functioning now. We're going forward. I'm not looking back. I tried to reach you for the last 14 plus years. And as Bo says, now is the time where the rubber meets the road. The psychopaths are being held accountable finally. Children are no longer a benefit to use as an object. Attorneys and judges, psychiatrists, psychopathic females and effeminate males are being held accountable for their actions upon them and are indeed wearing that millstone promised to you in Matthew 18. These are blessed days, and yes, I'm tired. Keeps us busy. I really don't know what I'll be talking about after this. Um, you know, and I, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. But I can guarantee you that the children will be safe. Because that's my ultimate goal. I don't have any other focus. And I'll continue teaching as long as it takes until we get everybody either rounded up or out of the way. But again, it's up in the air as to what happens after that. This week, I don't know if we'll have time to uh, talk all the way about it, but uh, another case in Indiana really shook me up. And um, everybody needs to know what's going on because it's something that has been prevalent for a lot of years. A daycare provider and drugging case faces another charge. She was picked up for driving without a license. I didn't see this come out back in February for some reason. She was charged in February for giving kids... Um, this is from the IndieChannel.com. In Marion County, Stephanie Gribble is charged with eight felony neglect counts. Neglect only. And a pretrial conference is scheduled for August 12th. Four children were hospitalized from Gribble's daycare from apparent drug overdoses. Doctors determined the most likely causes of the overdoses were Benadryl and Risperidone. Risperidone is a derivative of Rohypnol. She was giving children the date rape drug. And in an earlier report, it said it was in liquid form and it was a prescription. So a doctor had actually prescribed to her the ability to administer this medication to infants and toddlers. And everybody needs to be aware of that psychopath because the date rape drug has one purpose and one purpose alone. 
Benadryl has been known to knock kids out, as reported for, for years and years and years. And this is a new realm of child sexual abuse. And we'll be back on Saturday, folks. Be well, everybody.